Hello friends, Julia Simpson here, Kia Babies brand spokesperson. So excited to be back with you again for another Amazon Live. We are officially in the month of August, which is absolutely blowing my mind. I feel like where has the time gone? Where has the summer gone? Before you know it, we are going to be planning our Halloween costumes, pulling our sweaters out of storage. It's insane. Um, so happy to be here with you again. Thank you for hanging out. Um, here at Kia Babies, August is the month of surviving the newborn phase. So that's what we want to kind of be talking to you about, sharing products that are relevant to surviving that newborn phase with you this month. Um, hopefully that is relevant to you. If you are a mom-to-be, if you have mom-to-be friends, please send them this way. Give us a follow here on Amazon Live so that they don't miss any of this amazing content um, with these amazing products. Okay, so the newborn phase. Um, it can be a beautiful, amazing, intoxicating time where you are um, just getting to know this brand new, sweet, precious little human that you have just brought into the world. But real talk, it can also be completely exhausting and a little bit draining. Um, you know, for mamas, we're talking about hormones that are all over the place. You're just recovering from childbirth. There's been a huge disruption to your daily routine. Um, a very sweet disruption, but a disruption nonetheless. And obviously you're dealing with a newborn baby who doesn't sleep for more than two or three hours at a stretch. Um, you know, the disruption in sleep is the number one thing that new parents report as being the most difficult thing about that newborn phase. Um, sleep deprivation actually contributes to things like postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety, like mamas, dads, I've been there. Um, I know what a struggle baby sleep can be. Um, so on today's live, I do want to talk a little bit about some safe sleep, give some comforting and soothing tips to help baby sleep. Um, but most importantly, I want to share two Kia Babies products with you today that are going to help make your nights just a little bit easier. Um, and that is the Swaddle Wrap. And as you can see, I've got my little stand-in baby all wrapped up here. We're gonna go over this, how to use it. It is the easiest thing in the world. Um, and then we've also got our Kia Babies fitted crib sheets. Now I am still waiting on a slightly more attractive, more useful garment rack to come in. Um, I ordered it a long time ago. Who knows where that ended up? Um, so we're gonna have to just make do with our display here. I'll make sure that I unbox things for you and that I show you the up close of everything that we're talking about. Uh, let's get into it. Before I get too far, I do want to mention the promotion that we are running. It is a thank you for tuning into our Amazon Live. Um, so please take a look at the banner below this video, hit the claim button, and a discount is going to be applied to your purchase at checkout. Um, so that is gonna, that discount is gonna come off of your total when you actually complete your transaction. So please shop with us today. I want you to get your hands on the swaddle. I want you to get your hands on this crib sheet. Um, because this is an Amazon Live specific promotion, the discount is only valid uh, for one hour following the end of this video. So if you want to go ahead and shop, please do that. You already see something you love. You know you're going to need this stuff. Grab it, apply that discount now, um, or if you want to stick around for the entire video, hear what I have to say, I totally get it. Just make sure you come back and complete your purchase within one hour of the end of this video. Okay, so that being said, I am going to start with just a quick unboxing. Um, first of all, I'm a packaging nerd. I kind of love to just like kick things off that way. Um, I love when brands include nice little surprises in their packaging, which Kia Babies always does. Uh, but also, I actually think that this particular item makes a fantastic baby shower gift. Um, and so I wanted to just show you like how cute and sweet the packaging is um, so that if you want to give this as a gift, you know, you know what the box looks like and you know what you're getting and what you're giving someone. Um, so let's just talk about it really quickly. So this is the Soothe Swaddle Wrap. It comes in a three pack. Um, I'll show you the close up here of these patterns and I'm going to obviously unbox this and we'll lay this all out here. This uh, gray one that I have is actually my favorite. Um, so this is breathable, ultra soft, 
natural cotton and there is a tab included to uh, include a binky or a soother and I will show you that. Um, this is also just a great way for me to mention our socials because they're on the back of the box. So please point these out to your friends. Uh, make sure you take a look here. Uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. We have a presence on each one of those platforms and Instagram especially is just a really, really great community. We're always just sharing photos, sharing your stories. Um, and we're also doing like lots of fun giveaways and stuff like that. So please go give us a follow. Let's open these up so we can see them up close. We've got this super sweet little bunnies, raccoons. As you know, I just opened these out of the package. So you're gonna have to bear with me with the, the wrinkles here. They've been folded up, but so stinking cute, so sweet. I'll lay that out. Here is my beloved gray one. I just love gray. I think you can never go wrong with a nice neutral gray. Um, that cutie pattern. And pull these up a little bit. Try to make it look a little nicer so you can see everything. And then this super simple one here gray and white, just nice and neutral and unisex, which is part of what makes these such a great gift. If you are going to a baby shower and you're not sure of um, the sex of the baby that you're shopping for, or, you know, maybe mom is like a coworker and um, you are not really sure like what her nursery theme is or like what her taste for baby is going to be, but you want to make sure she definitely <laughs> likes what you've gotten her. You can't go wrong with something super simple and neutral like this. Um, and I always feel like Kia Babies really knocks it out of the park on their, their patterns and their colors. They're so sleek and stylish, um, just very cute. And this pattern is called Nordic. Um, so inside your box, you're gonna get this super cute little thing, which I just think is a nice touch. Again, makes this such a nice gift to give someone. Um, it's a bookmark. I'm a proud parent. I sing lullabies every night. I wipe away tears. I clean poop and change diapers. I get peed and vomited on. I conquer sleepless nights. I am a hashtag Kia parent. If that's not like <laughs> just the perfect kickoff into parenthood, I don't know what is because it couldn't be more true. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to talk really quickly about um, the fabric that these are made of. So this is a GOTS certified organic cotton, 100% organic cotton, um, and GOTS is G-O-T-S. And I'm gonna talk about it quickly because you may have no idea what that is or what it means, which is totally okay, um, but it is, it's a super cool distinction that I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, so GOTS is the Global Organic Textile Standard, um, and it is an organization that sets kind of the international guideline um, for ecological and social responsibility in the manufacturing of organic materials. So basically it is um, ensuring that the product, like, so this is cotton, obviously an organic textile, um, from beginning to end of its manufacturing, um, all down the line from the harvesting of the raw materials, it is done ethically uh, to, you know, the production line, the supply chain, of workers' conditions, um, wherever this is manufactured, um, it's also done ethically. So any brand or company that you see that has um, attained GOT certification, you know that they are very dedicated um, to just producing their products ethically and responsibly. Um, I'm so proud that Kia Babies has attained that, um, and I think it's really important, and so I wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, so about this organic cotton, I will say this like until I die about Kia Babies products, just the softest thing in the world. This, um, I mean, you know, it feels like being wrapped in a cloud, honestly. Um, I say it all the time, if Kia Babies ever wants to expand into pillowcases or bedding for adults, I'm here for it. My bed will be covered in it because it's just the softest, most comfortable material in the world. Um, and that's really important for sensitive newborn skin. Um, obviously, it's a lot more sensitive than ours. It's brand new. It's just being exposed to the elements for the first time. Um, newborns are covered in a waxy substance called vernix. 
uh, when they first come out and that you know can take weeks actually to kind of be exfoliated and sloughed away um, but if you you know if you're too rough with the removal of the vernix you can actually accidentally uh, kind of take the first layer of baby skin with it um, causing irritation so you want anything that is going to be coming into contact with a uh, small baby skin to be super super soft and non-irritating and that's exactly what you're going to get with these I also love that they are super light um, and breathable. I know Sophia tended to run really, Sophia is my 11 month old daughter, sorry. I forget that not everyone has joined us here before. Um, so my daughter, Sophia, she tended to run really hot um, when she was a small baby. And so I had to be really, really mindful um, of the material that I swaddled her in. It was really hard for us to find a good swaddle that didn't cause her to, to heat up in the night and get really uncomfortable. Um, so love that these are um, as airy as they are. Um, they feel you know very durable. They're going to keep baby nice and cozy, but again, like air is going to be able to circulate in them, which is very, very important. Um, probably my favorite thing about them though is just how easy they are to use. Holy cow. So for me, the traditional swaddle um, where you have like the piece of kind of muslin material um, and you have to fold one corner into a triangle and then you tuck one of our arm, baby's arms in, but you have to like put the flap from the, their heel to their shoulder. I swear, me trying to do a traditional swaddle is like that meme of the woman who's trying to like solve the very complicated math problem and you just see like complicated math formula all over her face. That was me with a traditional swaddle. It wasn't happening. So um, that complicated stuff is for the birds as far as I'm concerned. So I love an easy, just few step process. So as you can see, I've already wrapped up my bear here. I'm gonna unwrap him really quickly just so I can show you just how easy this is to use. Um, so let me unswaddle my friend here. Obviously my daughter being 11, month old, 11 months old is too big for the swaddle at this point. So I can't use her as my model. Okay, so this actually uses um, two-way stretch material, right? So you've got these two stretchy flaps here for the arms, um, and it has a no-scratch hook and loop fastener. Um, no-scratch is extremely important because, you know, this is going to be touching baby skin. So um, let me just tuck this guy in. I'm going to gently place the legs and the hips into this nice pocket here. Lift this flap up to expose this Velcro. You want baby's arm folded into his chest. Sophia also liked arms down at her side, which is also acceptable. So just figure out what is comfortable for your babe. There's a nice sticky patch here that's gonna connect to that Velcro. Tuck in baby's other arm. Obviously there doesn't have quite as much give as an actual baby would. Pull nice and snug and attach on this nice Velcro patch here. Um, voila, just a few steps, as I said. Um, again, I wish I could show you um, how I would actually do this on a human baby, but I just, you know, I didn't know where to find uh, a three or four month old baby, and Sophia just wasn't gonna have it. So, um, but hopefully you get the idea that this is super quick and easy to use. Um, which is just an absolute must for me. Uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you the little tab. Now, I didn't have a pacifier on hand because Sophia has not used a pacifier in a very long time, um, but there is a loop here. Here it is. This is absolutely genius so that you can clip on like a pacifier or binky holder um, to help keep binky in baby's mouth overnight. We had so much trouble with those little clips that really I didn't even like using around Sophia's neck and face um, that you would clip onto kind of the neckline here. She was always pulling that thing off, losing the pacifier in the night. Um, so it was just super frustrating. I love, love, love that this loop is included. Um, so let's talk about size of baby that's gonna fit in here. So 
This is generally recommended for baby zero to three months. Um, although this has been tested for babies up to about five months of age and it's perfectly acceptable and safe to use. Um, we did actually use a swaddle for Sophia until she was going on five months, I think right at the five month mark, which is perfectly fine with some caveats that we'll go over in just a second. Um, this is acceptable up to about 25 inches long, um, if that helps you, because, you know, not all babies are at the same size at the same time. So sometimes it's like, I mean, my baby is, you know, four months old, but, um, you know, they're a little shorter than average. So could they still fit in here? Yes, absolutely. Um, it is suitable for preemies, newborns, and infants between about six and 21 pounds. Um, so let's talk about why it's recommended for babies, you know, in that kind of range and why we say the zero to three months. So first it's just, that's when you're going to get the most benefit from a swaddle. Um, the first, you know, three months of a baby's life is often called the fourth trimester. And the reason we say that is because newborns really and truly just aren't fully equipped to deal with life outside of the womb um, when they're born. They, you know, still need a lot of the same conditions that they were used to in the womb to feel comfortable and to slowly kind of transition into life in the world. Um, and that process, it does not happen the moment they pop out. You know, it is a kind of months long, slow transition. And, um, you know, I feel like we don't talk about that fourth trimester period as much, but anyway, so um, they can conditions that mimic the womb, um, like tight quarters, being warm and cozy, all of that is going to be really helpful to help regulate baby's nervous system, um, which is what a swaddle is really great for. Um, and a very important reason why um, we also suggest swaddling for zero to three months is because the four month mark uh, tends to be a pretty common time that babies are attempting to roll over onto their tummies. Um, now, my daughter Sophia was not really even interested in kind of mastering that skill until she was uh, well into her fourth month and approaching that fifth month. Um, so, you know, that's why we continue to swallow her for longer than is, you know, considered standard. Um, but yes, so, just for safety's sake, um, we always want to say around that four month mark, start paying attention to whether baby is rolling um, because obviously we know that back sleep is safest. Um, that is what's generally recommended for newborn babies um, so that there's no suffocation risk. Uh, and you don't want their arms to be contained. Um, and have them like get onto their tummy and have no way to either lift themselves up to free their mouth and nose so that they can take a breath. Um, and you don't want them to be unable to flip themselves back over. Um, so it's very, very important that you pay attention to what your baby is able to do and when. And as soon as you see signs of rolling onto the tummy, you want to stop swaddling um, and switch to something like a sleep sack, which Kia Babies also sells. Um, so, you know, please check that out on the Kia Babies website. Um, just do your research and make a good decision for your family. So let's talk about some of the benefits of swaddling. So obviously, um, I just talked about, you know, mimicking the conditions of the womb. So newborn babies have trouble regulating their body temperature. Um, they are not as good at it as we are, and they like to be warm and cozy when they sleep, just like we do, right? Like most of us sleep with a comforter or blanket, regardless of the season, maybe we switch it out for something lightweight, um, but we tend to not sleep without being covered in a blanket. Well, babies like that same feeling. It's warm, it's comfortable, it's comforting. Um, so that's what a swaddle is going to provide for them. And because it is naturally comforting, um, when they have wake ups in the night and let's say, you know, they wake up and they're, they're not hungry, they don't need a feeding and they really just kind of need to know that things are okay and to be soothed back to sleep, a swaddle can help with that. Um, because you know, it again, mimics the conditions of the womb. It also mimics physical touch. Um, so, you know, it can help baby feel like they are still close to mama, even if they're in their crib or bassinet. So it can help cut down on night wakings. Um, what else? Um, 
So babies are born with something called the Moro reflex, and that is a very strong kind of startle response um, that small babies have. Um, and it's most prevalent in that fourth trimester period, so those first three months. And it is actually a protective mechanism against falling. So it's great that babies have it. Think of it as like if you've ever had a dream where um, you're falling and you kind of wake yourself up in bed because you've tried to catch yourself. Uh, that's exactly what happens to babies when their Moro reflex gets set off. Um, and it can be very, very disturbing to baby sleep. Obviously, they will wake up out of a full sleep when that happens. Um, you know, they can feel very alarmed, anxious, uh, and be very hard to settle um, if, if that happens. So um, how the swaddle helps with that is uh, the Moro reflex does kind of kick in just at random times. Um, it's just like the sign of a functioning nervous system starting to develop. But what really sets it off is certain types of motion or moving baby in a certain way. Um, like if we move too swiftly or uh, if you put them down into their crib, like head first, you always want to try and do booty first and then ease the head down. Um, but their arms being able to flap at the sides tends to set it off for a lot of babies and will cause that startle because they think that they're falling. So if baby's arms are kept like this or down at their side, um, it you know minimizes the risk of the Moro reflex getting set off and disturbing their sleep. Um, so that's very important. And then, you know, um, something that we went through with my daughter Sophia when she was little is um, it took us a while to be able to clip her fingernails because she had very, very soft skin um, around the nails and her nail beds. Uh, so she was growing like some good sized claws by the time she was like two or three months old. And uh, keeping a baby swaddled with their arms like this is a good way to help prevent them being able to claw or scratch their face or injure themselves in the night, which, um, you know, when Sophia would wriggle out of various swaddles that didn't end up working for us, um, not this one, um, you know, that was something that she did a lot. She would end up with scratches on her face. So you don't want that to happen. Um, so the swaddle is really good for that. And, uh, something that's very important that I want you to make sure you're checking whenever you do swaddle baby is that those arms are very securely against the body. You want this area here, uh, to be nice and snug. Again, babies are used to very close cramped quarters in the womb. Um, so you don't have to worry that that's uncomfortable for them. Where you want some give and some looseness to your swaddle is here in the hips, in the hips and legs. They should be able to open their hips inside the swaddle and they should be able to move their legs around inside it. Um, that helps prevent something called hip dysplasia. And that just basically means that um, the ball of the hip joint can't move in the socket correctly like it needs to. And over time it can cause it to like come become dislocated. And newborn babies, um, are, their ligaments and joints are still kind of loosey-goosey, so they are more prone to dislocations and things like hip dysplasia than we are. So you do always want to be mindful of the position of their hips. Now, what's great about this particular swaddle wrap is that it is ergonomically designed with that in mind already. So as you can see, like this is nice and shaped to the hips and the legs, and it's nice and spacious here. So as long as you are just securing baby's arms up top nice and snug, you don't even have to worry about the bottom portion because Kia Babies has already designed this to prevent hip dysplasia, which is you know a, a great load off of your mind. Um, so yeah, just make sure that baby's arms are nice and secure, that they can't wriggle themselves free. Um, it was something that really kept us up at night with my daughter when she was able to poke her arms out of her swaddle because what happens is they can kind of move it up over their mouth and nose and that's a suffocation risk. The way that this neckline is designed and the way that these flaps are designed, how snug you can pull this um, nice and closed, how durable this uh, Velcro latch is here, that is not going to happen with this. Um, so another thing that I just absolutely love about this particular swaddle. Um, now, some tips I wanted to share with you, uh, because swaddles are not only great for getting baby to sleep at night, um, if they're also really great for comforting a fussy baby. So if you have a baby with colic, um, and colic is really just 
kind of a poorly understood extended period of crying um, that presents itself as a pattern. Like baby continually has long, long unexplained crying spells. That's what colic is. My daughter, Sophia, was blessed with it, of course. Um, we just could never really, really figure out what was going on with her. She did have some acid reflux, but even after that was under control and she was an otherwise completely physically healthy infant, she still went on crying jags, just endless crying jags. She was very easily overstimulated, uh, got very easily dysregulated, which just means, you know, she got very easily upset. So she was kind of upset over the feeling of being upset, which is very common in newborn babies, right? Because they don't have the ability to calm themselves down. So um, something that is really, really useful for periods like that um, is something called the five S's. Now you can Google this, um, but I'll just go over them quickly with you right now. So the first S is swaddle, right? So babies just find the swaddle very comforting, very regulating to their nervous system. So swaddle baby up nice and snug. The second S stands for side or stomach position. Now, when we're laying baby down to sleep, we always want them on their back. But as long as you are holding baby and you are actively comforting them and observing them, then they really like to be on their side or on their stomach. So you would just hold baby like this. Make sure you are supporting this head at all times. Um, and for whatever reason, this is just really comforting and regulating to them. So the third S stands for swinging. And what we mean by that, it's a very gentle motion. Uh, you know, when they are in the womb, they're floating in water the whole time. Uh, they're also, you know, moving with your body as you stand, lay down, walk around. Um, if you put music on and danced around while you were pregnant, baby is used to movement and motion is very, very regulating for them as well. So some, you'll just have to figure out what your baby enjoys. Um, some like the swinging motion, um, others kind of like a jiggle like this, or, you know, kind of a, a nice rhythmic rock. Um, you always want to make sure that you're supporting the head and neck and that you're never shaking. But so that, that third S is for swinging. Basically, it just means get baby moving, however they like to be moved. Um, so the fourth S is for shushing. And so that is, again, you're mimicking the sounds that they're used to in the womb. Remember, they're surrounded by water. So apparently the womb kind of sounds like shh, right? There's this constant kind of white noise happening. Um, so you can shush. Shh, shh, shh. If that starts to get exhausting, any form of white noise that's not too close to baby's ears is going to be very comforting to them. So, you know, play some white noise on your phone, on YouTube. There are apps for it. Uh, you could even turn on a vacuum cleaner in, a, in another room or a hair dryer so that it's just loud enough for them to hear that kind of constant shushing noise, um, but it's not going to hurt their eardrums. So just any kind of white noise or shushing. So that's that fourth S. And then the fifth S is sucking. So um, the babies love to suck. It's very regulating for them. Um, it's comforting. Obviously, you know, nursing is a very natural instinct for them. So um, love pacifiers for a fussy baby or, you know, binkies, any kind of teether or soother in the mouth that they can suck on. Um, you know, give them a bottle if they're bottle fed, or if you want to let baby um, latch on for a comfort nurse, if you are nursing. So maybe they're not actually hungry, but they really just need closeness to mom. And, you know, again, they need the sucking motion. Um, you can do a comfort nursing session. That is totally, totally cool. And it's really great for baby's nervous system. Um, so yes, those are the five S's. Swaddle, an absolute must. Uh, could not have survived the newborn phase without our swaddle. Um, side or stomach position, swinging, shushing, sucking. I'm telling you, it is life-changing for a fussy, colicky baby. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the swaddle. 
absolutely obsessed. I want you to get your hands on it. So please take advantage of the Amazon Live promotion that we are currently running. If you see the banner down below this video, there should be a claim button, click it, and that will automatically apply a discount to your purchase at checkout. So you have to actually hit add to cart, complete your transaction um, for that discount to be applied. Now, because this is an Amazon Live promotion, it's basically a thank you for showing up to these, hanging out with us. Um, we absolutely love you for it. Um, so yes, it will only be valid for up to an hour after the end of this live stream. So like if you wanna add something to cart right now and think it over or just finish out this video, totally cool. I love when you stick around, <laughs> of course, um, but just you know, make sure that you have in the back of your mind, oh yeah, within one hour of the end of that live stream, I have to go complete my transaction for me to get that discount. Um, so please don't forget about that. And if you want to never miss one of these hangout sessions and you want to be able to take advantage of future promotions, please add us, give us a follow here on Amazon Live um, so that you can keep up with what we're doing and what we're talking about. Okay, so let's get to the fitted crib sheet. So let me just show you, um, these come in, this pattern is called Woodland. Um, again, nice and neutral and simple. I love, love, love gray for a nursery. I just feel like you can't go wrong with it. It doesn't clash with anything. It's sleek, it's stylish, it's unisex. So it works for a boy or a girl. Um, Sophia has lots of gray in her nursery. It's just like grade A in my book for baby things. Love, love, love a good gray. Um, again, this is called Woodland. So it's got sweet little mountainscapes and trees on this one. And then adorable little woodland creatures. And we've got actually the Kia baby um, parrot on there as well. Let me show you up close real quick. Oh, you know what? Just pull this down. Like so, so stinking cute, right? I actually love this one. We're big hikers and campers in my family. Um, so the woodland theme is really, really where it's at for us. And then the theme of my daughter Sophia's nursery is animals actually. So the more animals, the better. Just love, love, love these. Um, these are made of a Jersey cotton and I'm gonna talk your ear off, just kidding, um, about why I love Jersey cotton, especially for crib sheets. Uh, so first of all, as I continually say because it's Kia babies and man, do they make soft things. Um, these are the softest crib sheets in the world. So, you know, baby is obviously going to be laying their skin against this. They're, you know, if they're old enough to be laying on their tummy or their side and their face, their face is going to be pressed against this. You don't want anything rough or irritating. That's not what you're going to get with this. It's, it feels absolutely like butter. And I have washed and dried these already, and they are still just as soft as when I pulled them out of the package, maybe even softer, um, which is hard to imagine because they're, they're, they feel like heaven. Um, and as you can see, like they are still in great shape. They are not wrinkly. Um, I love a crib sheet that's easy to clean and that can withstand washing. Um, so these can be machine washed on cold. You can tumble them dry on low. Now with, as with any crib sheet, in case you didn't know, you don't want to use fabric softener on these because it will affect the fit of the material over time. Um, and you know, these are no exception, but you don't need it. Like that's why it's so important to just have a crib sheet material that is super, super soft so that you don't have to worry about using anything like that to soften it up to make it comfortable for baby. It just comes out of the package, super, super comfy. Um, I did wanna talk about the fit because probably one of my least favorite things in life is struggling with a fitted crib sheet. Like, I don't know anyone in the world who thinks that that is fun. Um, you can never like get the corners exactly right. One corner is always popping up on you. It's truly one of the worst experiences in life. First world problem, I know. Um, but these actually use something called snug fit technology, which is unique to Kia babies. Um, I love how innovative the brand is always, always thinking of like, what are the most 
difficult slash annoying baby products that everyone has, you're going to be using over and over and over again. What are those and like how can we make them easier and more convenient? I swear the Kia babies must have like actual meetings about, about this topic um, because their snug fit technology has made this so easy to put on and take off. Um, so basically what that means is just that this material is very adaptable, um, <coughs> excuse me, to any size or shape um, that it's being applied to. So um, it's going to hug the contours of your mattress really nicely. It's not super rigid with no give, um, not like that at all. Um, it's going to just drape very nicely and, and hug the corners so that it's nice and secure. And the elastic is actually hidden inside the fabric here and it's very elaborately stitched. Um, man, there is so much stitching here, which means that you're going to get a super snug fit. Also, this is not going to fray over time and the more that you wash it in the machine and it's not going to start to rip apart from the sheet. So I don't know if that's ever happened to you with your fitted sheets, but it has definitely happened to me in the past. It's, you know, you're constantly kind of tugging and pulling on them and you're, you know, washing them fairly frequently. Uh, the lining here will actually just tear away from the rest of the sheet and then it's useless, right? Because it, it won't hug, hug the corners of your mattress anymore. So uh, that is not going to happen with these. And um, it's super important that it's a nice snug fit on, on your mattress. That's very important. Um, in baby's sleep space, their crib or their bassinet, whatever. Um, you don't want them to be able to pull the corners up accidentally so that it's coming up over the nose and face because that is a suffocation risk. So you want something that's going to, to say, stay on your mattress really nice and tight. Um, and so that is definitely the case with these. Again, super easy to remove though as well because the fabric is so stretchy and adaptable. Um, so you're not going to be fighting with it to get it off to put it in the washer. And the thing I love about Jersey cotton, um, besides how soft it is, is that it's naturally temperature regulating. And that's just because it's so, so breathable. It's like, lets a lot of air through, um, which you want for a crib sheet. Because again, it's very important that baby doesn't overheat in the night. Um, and also, you know, just in case they are flipping onto their tummy and putting their, you know, their face up against this. Uh, anytime I have a product like this that I'm gonna potentially use for Sophia, I like to put it up to my face and just take a couple of deep breaths, making sure I'm blowing out. If you don't feel any air when you blow out, this is probably too thick. And I would worry about baby getting a little too hot in the night or either if they got their face pressed into this, not being able to take in a good breath. Um, you know, which obviously is not what you want. This extremely breathable, so nice and light and airy. So baby is not gonna get overheated. They're not gonna get sweaty and yucky. Um, and also, you know, they're gonna be able to breathe through this just in case it ever did for some reason get up around their mouth and nose, which it shouldn't. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I'm a big fan of Jersey Cotton. Um, Again, these make a fantastic baby shower gift because they are so nice and neutral. It is something that every parent is going to use, right? Baby has to sleep somewhere. Eventually they will have, you know, a crib or a bed. Um, and so they're going to need crib sheets. Um, so absolutely get your hands on these if you have any mamas to be in your life that you are shopping for. Um, and we touched on a little bit of like making sure that baby doesn't overheat. We talked about some suffocation risks. So I did just want to leave you with some safe sleep guidelines. Um, so these come directly from the AAP, which is the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, and they're, they're just some guidelines for you to have in the back of your mind when you're thinking about baby, safe baby sleep. Um, so let's first talk about the room setup. Um, Baby should be sleeping in mom and dad's room. It's recommended for the first six months up to even a year. Um, now, Sophia is 11 months and she has already transitioned uh, over the last couple of months into her own room and her own crib. Um, and that works really great for us. Um, now, the reason that it's suggested that baby rooms in with mom and dad is just so that you are in close proximity so that you can hear 
uh, what's going on with baby, if they are having any breathing difficulty, if they've gotten themselves into, you know, an unsafe position, anything like that, and so that you can respond quickly, and that helps prevent SIDS deaths. Um, but again, that, that there's a half a year gap there in that guideline, that suggested guideline. So do you transition at six months or do you transition to a year? It's really, um, you know, you need to think about your family's sleep needs. You need to think about, you know, your house, how, um, you know, where baby's room is in proximity to yours. Lots of things um, that can help you make the right decision for your family. But just know that the guideline is they should be in mom and dad's room um, up until the age of six months or even up to a year. And of course, you can room share for longer than that if you want. This is just the recommended like minimum time. Um, so speaking of that, they should be in mom and dad's room, but they should be on a separate sleep surface. So not in bed with mom and dad. And again, this is just to help prevent, um, rollover injuries. Um, you know, God forbid mom or dad, you know, accidentally in the night roll over on baby. It helps prevent SIDS deaths from terrible accidents like that. Um, also, you know, our adult beds are just kind of not really designed with newborn needs in mind. Um, we tend to like nice plush mattresses that you can kind of sink into. Um, we like big fluffy pillows, lots of blankets, things like that. And, um, you know, excess items like that in baby sleep space are just not safe for them. Uh, you know, they can smush their faces into pillows. They can pull blankets up over their nose and mouth and not really realize that that is making it hard for them to breathe. Um, and you know, they can't help themselves free themselves from those situations and those positions. So, you know, you don't want to be bed sharing. You want baby in a separate crib or a bassinet in your room. Um, so just make sure they have a separate sleep space of their own. Make sure that that sleep space, like I just said, is free of those kind of excess, um, comfort items. Babies right now, uh, up until, you know, about 18 months to even 24 months don't need things like blankets. That's what you have swaddles and sleep sacks for. Um, they don't need loose top sheets, just a fitted crib sheet will do. Uh, they don't need pillows. They don't need stuffed animals, um, things like that. Anything that's kind of uh, plush and loose in baby sleeping space that they could smash their face into um, is not optimally safe. Um, what else? So you want to, uh, temperature is important. Um, so the ideal sleeping temperature for baby is between 68 degrees and 72 degrees. Now for our family, we found that the lower end of that 68 was a little on the chilly side um, and it actually disturbed Sophia's sleep. So we found that closer to 72 was all of our kind of sweet spot. Um, so just know that that's the range between 68 and 72 degrees and that's to prevent baby from overheating. Um, now baby getting too warm is a SIDS risk and SIDS, if you don't know, I've said it a few times, is sudden in infant death syndrome. Um, which, you know, obviously we want to do everything we can to prevent that from happening. So it is really important that you make sure that baby is not getting too hot. And then um, it is equally important that baby not get too cold, but really the risk there is just that it's going to disturb baby sleep. They're not going to be comfortable and they're going to be wiggling around and trying to find warmth and get warm. And they're probably eventually going to wake up and scream at you and say, mom, I'm really cold. Um, but, you know, sometimes it they can't say that in words so you're just gonna be scrambling and it's like you're not hungry you know uh i don't know what to do for you and sometimes it's that they're cold um so i wanted to give you a way this comes from my pediatrician um to check if baby is too hot or too cold so if you are having doubts about about the temperature in the room or you want to know like you know, how is baby doing? Are they too hot or too cold? Or if they're fussy and you can't figure out why, touch the back of their neck um, and their chest. So if it's sweaty and clammy, they are probably too warm. And even if they are sleeping soundly, it's if they're sweaty, it probably is worth as gently as you can um, unwrapping them from their swaddle or whatever you have them in and removing a layer. Now, generally babies, um, you know, are most comfortable in like a long sleeve and footed breathable pair of jammies. So something like a pair of cotton jammies with feet and long sleeves. Um, but if baby's sweaty, remove a layer. Um, even if it means, you know, slightly waking baby and having to get them back to sleep, because again, overheating can potentially be dangerous. 
Um, now, if you touch the back of their neck or their chest and it feels like noticeably cold to you to where you're like, oh, this wouldn't feel comfortable to me, um, you know, and baby is like wiggly, fussy, and you can't get them to kind of settle into a good sleep, um, they're probably cold. And so you don't necessarily have to wake them if they're sleeping just fine, but it may be worth just adding an extra layer. Like keep in mind for next time, they probably need warmer jammies. Um, or maybe you need a thicker sleep sack or a thicker swaddle, something like that. Um, or you need to adjust the temperature in the room. Um, but you always wanna be checking their, the back of their neck or their chest. And of course you wanna be touching their skin so make sure you're feeling underneath their jammies. Um, because using the extremities to tell you, so like just touching baby's hand, um, it, it can be inaccurate because the extremities actually always run a little bit colder, especially in newborn babies um, whose kind of circulatory system is just starting to ramp up just because of how long it takes blood flow to reach those areas. So you might feel the hand and be like, oh, that feels really cold. I think baby's whole body must be cold and really they're perfectly comfortable. Or you might feel and be like, no, they feel plenty cold. They're not overheating and actually they are, but you can't tell because you don't know that the back of their neck is sweaty. Um, so always check the back of the neck or the chest. And that's all I've got for you. Um, thank you so much for hanging out, for sticking around for all of this please get your hands on the wrap swaddle, a swaddle wrap, um, and or the crib, fitted crib sheets. You cannot go wrong with them. I'm telling you, um, you need them in your life. Uh, hopefully I've convinced you today. Uh, if you want to take advantage of our Amazon Live promotion, uh, you still have time to do that. You have one hour following the end of this video, which I am wrapping it up right now. Uh, so go ahead and complete your purchases, add to cart, all of that. And if you click the claim button on the banner below this video, it will just automatically apply a discount um, to your purchase when you complete it. Um, so yeah, please take advantage of that and give us a follow here on Amazon Live so you don't miss any of these videos, so that you don't miss any of these amazing products, and so that you don't miss any more promotions. Um, I've loved hanging out with you as always. Keep creating wonderful moments and I am going to sign off until next time. Bye friends.